All right, everyone. I think we have a very limited time. I want to get through all of these slides. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anderson Sorant. I'm an, an elder at Brooklyn Faith Seventh-day Adventist Church on the corner of 56 and Church Avenue. We'll go a little bit more into my background as we jump into this presentation. Let's go through everything. So we're gonna, this is a, a very brief synopsis of everything that we're gonna cover in today's uh, presentation. Uh, be sure that if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the chat. We're gonna save as much time as possible to talk through everything and, and come up with some solutions to some of the questions and issues that you may have. Um, you may have. Let's begin with the word of prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for allowing us just to gather here today. We want to thank you for everything that you've done for us. Continue to bless everyone that's represented here. Be with their ministries, be with their churches, dear Lord. Continue to guide us. Give them wisdom and give us all wisdom and understanding. I pray in your name. Amen. All right. If you guys can hear me, if everyone is good, just put a thumbs up in the chat. Put a thumbs up in the chat if you guys can hear me, if you guys are good to go. If you're seeing everything, if everything looks good, put a thumbs up in the chat and we'll get started right away. All right, cool, let's start. So a little bit about myself. I hate taking pictures. I hate taking pictures of myself specifically, but as I mentioned, I am an elder at the Brooklyn Faith Seventh-day Adventist Church. If you wanna visit us, we're at the corner of 56 and Church Avenue. Um, I'm a father, husband, a son, and I've worked in and around social media marketing specifically for the last nine years of my life, which is insane if you think about it. Um, I've worked on a variety of different brands, ranging from Visa, MasterCard, to Nutella, Butterfinger, Starkist, Tuna, um, Mountain Dew, and, and the likes. Um, I've done everything from community management, which is more responding to people, social strategy, social planning, influencer marketing, uh, analytical data analyst, all that other good stuff. Um, and now I'm lending a lot of my expertise to my own church, as well as the conference, as we make this Fourier into um, digital marketing. So I wanna start with this. Our mandate, with, it, it begins with a verb found in Matthew 28, verse 19. It's why we're all here. And the verb is go. It's not to stay. It doesn't say read. It doesn't say listen. It says to go. You go therefore into the world. And as we walk through this document, the role of social media within your organization has to be centered on taking the gospel of Jesus to a mass audience. We can't, we no longer want social just to be the place where we put in flyers or we are just posting sermons, but it has to be an active part of your overall communication strategy. So let's begin here. I think it's really interesting to understand where we are in terms of the digital realm. And I think there are going to be five interesting facts that we can find out about social. Um, the first one, 84% of young people under the age of 21, and at least 73% of, of church members, 50 to 64, are on at least one social platform every single day. Uh, the latest statistics suggest that there are 3.7 billion social media users in the world as of 2021. Um, the average person spends at least two and a half hours, which is incredible to think about. They spend at least two and a half hours on a given social media platform every single day. Um, and 91% of the people who are using social media are doing so on their phones. And the fifth one is probably the most important one. There are, th we know that there are 3.7 billion social media users on the planet. This equates to almost half of the world's population. I want to reiterate that. Half of the world is using social media on a daily basis. That's an important fact to remember when you are creating content for these social channels. Uh, so as a spiritual social media marketer, it is our responsibility to find the intersection between faith and culture. We've been handed this 
tool, the greatest tool in ministry that has ever been created. And we want to make sure that it is more than just an opportunity for you to post like I don't want to call it frivolous, but you want to create content that is meaningful and authentic to your church and your church's ministry. I think uh, Pastor Francois mentioned this earlier today, but the community, the role of a communicator is transforming. We no longer want to just be the person who informs people of when there's a baptism or informs the audience about um, an event that's happening at the church. We want the communications teams to become a ministry in and of itself. And you have this opportunity now. We've never had a tool that can function and reach people in, as immediately as social media does. And we want to leverage social media to do ministry, not just to promote ministry. It's a tool to show the world what it means to be a child of the king. So we're at an inflection point in history. Never has it been more true that the modern church has been heavily invested in programming in programming that conflates attendance to mission. And we understand this as professionals, as social media professionals, that being in the building does not necessarily mean that you are um, you, you are paying attention or you're understanding the, the work of the gospel. We know that in the, a post-pandemic reality, that a lot of our members are still uh, remaining at home and they're still engaging with our content. They're responding and writing things in the YouTube channel, in the YouTube comments. And we want to make sure that they feel like they're as much of a part of your church as the people who are inside of the actual physical sanctuary. So I think the, the, a perfect place to begin this conversation is to determine, you know, what digital touch points are primary ones which ones could be a little bit more secondary, and then how to create strategies to talk to your audience on both of those. So the first platform, the first digital touch point for any of your brands will be your, give me one second, let's adjust my screen. Okay, perfect. The first digital touch point is gonna be your church's website. There's no way around it. Um, we wanna make sure that you're, when you're speaking about your church, and you're connecting to people, you're not saying it's just my website. We're, we're directing people specifically to a specific URL. You're saying for more information about X, visit brokenfaith.org, northeasternconference.org or northeastern.org. It is uh, the hub in which all of your, your content is gonna be attached to. So it needs to represent your church in its fullest. I would think, and I know that there is a lot of controversy around Facebook, but Facebook is the biggest social platform on the planet at the moment. Yes, it is be it's and we, we can talk about algorithms a little bit later. It's it is a little bit difficult to get a lot of traction on, on Facebook. However, there are a lot of really creative tools that you can use. You can even host a small group ministry. On a Facebook page, you can create a, a Facebook group just for new believers, a Facebook group for young people, a Facebook group for people interested in cooking, interested in fashion. You can host a, 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 grant, a, a wide assortment of content on Facebook. YouTube, let's be, be, be real. I, I believe uh, the, the statistic goes 400 hours of content is uploaded to YouTube every minute. YouTube and Facebook are going to be interconnected to all of the your social media efforts moving forward. They are the biggest platforms to host both video content as well as some, some level of engagement. And you want to make sure that your YouTube channel is set up for your future success. And then there's Instagram, the, the photo sharing platform. Instagram is a part of Facebook's suite of apps um, and is going to be vitally important to showcase you know, a lot, of, uh, it's going to be important to showcase the authenticity of your church, your church experience. Um, sometimes you can feature your church members, you can host uh, testimonies. There's a lot of flexibility in the creative content that you can post on face on Instagram. Let's go to some more secondary, um, secondary digital platforms. I would think, generally speaking, that for most churches, Twitter isn't going to be as relevant. 
but it depends on the ministry and the, the ministries that are a part of your church. Because Twitter is a more conversational platform, it is a, often a lot less reliant on audiovisual components as Instagram is or Facebook can be. But that's not to say that you can't leave a devotional or can't think of some other ways to leverage Twitter um, as a platform. It's now had a um, transformation where they've included a lot of other audio only tools, similar to Clubhouse, where you can host um, essentially a live podcast on there. So there are a lot of ways to leverage Twitter for, for, uh, for your brand success. Then there's Pinterest. A lot of churches wouldn't think of Pinterest as a, a primary social media platform, but Pinterest is more, most likely and more often used um, for brands that are creating content around fashion, around uh, cooking, around general lifestyle. And that aligns in my head very closely to the things that most churches promote. Lifestyle changes, fitness goals, cooking recipes, fashion, and there are a whole host of other creative ways that your church can leverage um, can leverage Pinterest in, a, in, a, in, a, in an effective way. And then there's TikTok. It's probably the newest social media platform of all. It is exploding in terms of its popularity. It's a video sharing platform um, where generally speaking, most people are creating content between 15 to 60 seconds. And it is one of the one of, if not the only popular social network that hasn't been created in the US, which leads to a bunch of other controversies. But it is it's a really important tool. And there are a lot of really fun churches that are creating content on there. But the key to TikTok is going to be creativity. And I think that if you're gonna, if you're interested in participating on the platform, my recommendation would be to look at what other brands are doing and what other churches are doing and how they're leveraging the platform. <clears throat> And then work with your team in order to create content that's specifically for TikTok. And then you can distribute that content in other places. Then there's the metaverse and whatever else comes next. We don't, we wouldn't know. But as a marketer, it is your responsibility to evaluate every new social network and see if it's an avenue in which you can use to spread the gospel of God. This is your responsibility as a, a social media marketer or a communications director at your church. You need to evaluate, you need to be on these platforms and determine whether or not they are, or they can be used for um, your church's uh, goals and expressions. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the chat and we'll discuss them. I'm gonna zip through this as quickly as possible so we can spend the, the bulk of our time um, talking to one another. So I, I was digging through as I was putting this together to, to look at some quotes that were very inspirational to me. And it says, Ellen G. White says that God tests and proves us by the common occurrences of life. It is the little things which reveal the chapters of the heart. So let's talk about the four steps you'll need in order to create a successful social media strategy. Step one, the first thing you wanna define your church's goals and objectives. Why are you on social media? What are some things that you want to accomplish? Um, what are some tools that you're going to use to accomplish those things? Uh, and the most important thing is what are you going to say? What are you going to do that's going to be separate and different from what other churches are doing that's going to help you to stand out? Step number two, let's look at what other ministries are doing. What are some other successful ministries, whether they're within the realm of Adventism or outside of that realm? What are they doing that is unique, that is creative, but also helps to extend the gospel commission? Step number three, let's look at the current state of your social platforms. Are they where you want them to be? What do, do you have all of your passwords? Um, what channels do you, are, what social channels are you currently on? Where is your audience and where do you need to be? Step four is begin to create create a cohesive content plan and an editorial calendar. Be, you, that will allow you to schedule out um, the content that you're gonna be creating across all of your social networks. So let's begin with the first objective. Define your, uh, your objectives and your goals. This is a, a really simple exercise, who, what, where, why, and what. 
those are some of the questions as a communicator and as a marketer that you're going to you go into want to have answered before you jump into the social realm it like we discussed earlier today uh, and like the pastor mentioned earlier you don't want to start creating content that goes viral for the wrong reasons more often than not the reasons and rationales are going to be negative so you want to make sure that you have a purpose and you're sticking to that purpose before you dive into the wonderful world of social media. The next thing, and I've just listed out some ministries here, um, you wanna take a look at the churches that are doing it really, really well and understand you know, what they're doing and why they're doing it. Um, some of these churches include the Faith City Church, Faith City Music. I think that they, one of the things that they do extremely well is marry music into their content they have a very very unique point of view and i can i appreciate that one of the brand, one of the churches that i follow on instagram the next church is my gen which is a church within our within the greater new york conference what they do really well is translate their church experience into the digital world the digital realm i think that their content when you look at it if it almost makes you feel like you're there and the next church is the rock gen church uh, I think that this church understands the visual medium of Instagram and they're able to translate that in a very creative way. And one of the aspects of uh, content that you, one of the things you want to think about when you're producing content is how to stop people from just scrolling endlessly. And their content tends to do that. It tends to be very eye-opening. So the second step is to audit your social presence. Do you have um, all of the passwords necessary to get into your Facebook page, get into your Twitter page, Instagram page, and so on and so forth? Are these passwords really complex? Do you have two-factor authentication turned on? And if you don't know what that is, I would highly suggest that you Google it, but you wanna make sure that all of your accounts are secure and all of them have a password that is not easily guessed. So if your password right now is Adventist123, I would, I would recommend strongly that you change that. How often have you in the past or has your brand or your church been posting content? And how well has that content done? If, you were, if your church was posting content sporadically, then maybe it's an opportunity for you to increase the number of posts either per day or per week that I'm you're going creating. To um, if, if you've been posting like content pretty regularly and it's not been doing well, maybe it's time to scale back the types of content. Then look at the content that's been posted. Are there people that are featured or things that are part of your feed initially that might, might not be relevant? Maybe your church changed location or they changed the overall look and feel of the church. So some of that content may need to come down, may need to be archived. And the last thing is what was working what didn't work. You wanna be able to determine those, those items. The last piece of this puzzle is to begin to create your content calendar. And I always suggest the first step in creating a content calendar is to identify the things that you wanna talk about. Do you wanna feature devotionals? Do you wanna feature testimonials, verses of inspiration? Um, do you wanna feature uh, like a Wednesday prayer hour, um, meet a member Monday? What are some things that you wanna talk about? And you, as you draft up these content pillars, you draft them into a calendar. So you know that on Monday the 1st, you're gonna talk, you're gonna have an interview from your pastor. On Friday, you're gonna have a, a welcome to Sabbath post. And then you scatter those throughout your content calendar in order to understand, and for the rest of your team to understand every single day, there's gonna be a piece of content or however the frequency that you wanna include every so often you're gonna have content that's gonna be delivered on each specific day. This helps you to create a lot, of, a lot of really, really high quality content in a really quick fashion and allows you to analyze what's working and what's not working. The last thing is don't compare yourself to any other church. Your church is wholly unique. And we understand that comparison is a thief of joy. Um, your church is not gonna function and work just like my church will. And your church is unique. And I think that your community needs to see that. And your social channels need to express a lot of that. And you wanna make sure that your content is unique, authentic, 
and comes from a place of love and adoration. And I'm listing up some, re some resources at the end of this. I think I'm gonna work with the communication team to send this, this document out to you, but here are some resources that you can use um, as you're either creating graphics or you need some more marketing inspiration that is specifically targeted towards churches or you're looking for some video content. These are some resources that, resources that I've used. Um, I built this entire presentation in Canva. I'm a big advocate for it. It's free for, for the most part, but even the subscription model is fairly low cost. Um, and I would absolutely recommend that everyone get a subscription to, to Canva and start creating content. Let's give it a couple minutes. Are there any questions so far? Hello. Awesome. Hi. Um, I have uh, our our church has um, in Salem Temple. Ours is website is basically kind of it looks like it's controlled by the conference, and it doesn't. We don't have any real way to do anything with the website there. What do we do there? Sure. I believe you can reach out to Pastor Francois if you're. I believe the a lot of the churches work the. Their websites were created, they were created stock websites for most of the churches in the conference. But if you have any web specific questions, Pastor Francois would definitely be your resource um, for answering those. Thank, thank you. Of course. Hello, I've got a question. Can I, oh, I'm sorry, someone else. I didn't see all the other hands, if I apologize. No, 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 go ahead. What's your question? Okay, thank you. And I apologize to anyone else whose hand was up and you feel like I'm jumping in. So I apologize. But in the in the main room, someone asked, was there were there um, basically uh, stock? Um, uh, what is it like flyers and and brochures um, that the conference uses and, and, and can give to the churches? Do you know the answer to that? I don't believe I believe everything that the conference creates the 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 graphic designers create them. However, let me go back one slide. Um, for video content, if you look under, if you look at nucleus.church, that's a platform that you can pull a ton of stock footage, church specific stock footage from. And now there are a lot of like, there are a lot of websites that have um, church specific graphics that you can use. I personally use Canva when creating content for churches. Like if I have to create a um, uh, uh, a graphic for a, a specific event, but to get the inspiration it takes a little bit. It takes a little bit of work to do so, and I'm not a, a graphic designer by trade. Um, that is a, a good question. I can um, get an answer. Can for I? You. Can I just jump in for a quick second just to sure. share some information on that? Mm -hmm. I am I apologize. Um, there is a website called playbackmedia.com. They have a lot of great content there. I think it's a hundred dollars and you have unlimited download. They have videos, um, moving backgrounds and um still images. You could use that. Another source of resources. Um, I know a lot of churches use is easy worship. Easy Worship do have a subscription premium. It's, I think it's $125 a year where they do create videos and stock images for different seasons and so forth. The only thing with Easy Worship, you know, you have to make sure and pay attention to the content because it's mostly geared towards Sunday churches. Mm -hmm. So you could, th those are some resources that you could tap into. Thank you for that. Yes, thank you both. Thank you guys very much. I see two more hands. Feel free to jump in. Um, I wanted to ask, is Church Motion Graphics a third party from like the actual application of motion graphics? Or is that like a separate website? It's a it's a separate website, but it is um it's another platform that you can pull some really, really simple graphics to, to use for your church. Okay, thank you. Of course. Uh, good afternoon. 
<coughs> um, just my question is, how do you, <coughs> excuse me, get the people in the different departments, church, pastor, whoever, to actually generate this content? Because that's not my forte, and I kind of refuse to do it because it will drive me crazy on top of everything else. So, like, you know, you ask people more than once, and after a while, I just get out of it because... I'm not good at producing content for Facebook and that kind of thing, but mm -hmm. people that should be able to do something don't. And how do you get them to do it without yelling? <laughs> that's a good, that's a good, a good question. Uh, if you didn't hear it, it's, it's how to get the buy-in from the other ministries in order to determine, in order to get content uh, to create for your social platforms. And it's really about working with them and getting them to understand how important it is. And I, I would assume that the first stakeholder that you want to get into would be your pastor. All of the pastors in the conference have been briefed on the uh, relevance of social media and how important communication is. So you want to make sure that your pastor is on your side with this. And then you show it to them on the, on the church board. You talk to them and, and indicate to them just how important it is for us to get outside of the four walls of our church and get our message out. Get get our message out, and that requires everyone's help and buy-in. Um, but creating content for a social is incredibly easy, right? If you have all of these content buckets, think of it like this: you have thirty, oftentimes thirty days in a month. All right, you're not going to post content all thirty days. But let's say we want to post content half of that time, fifteen posts across Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You have 15 pieces of content that you need to create. Uh, if your church has five ministries, you've already have five posts uh, that you can assign to them. That leaves you 10 posts to create. If you take half of those 10 posts, one a week to do a piece of Sabbath inspiration, that leaves you with only five original pieces of content to create. If you get my drift and then so on and so forth, you want to first divide up what you're going to be talking about into different content buckets and that will help you to create content in a pretty smooth and efficient way thank you of course well can i say something to that sure yeah i sense his frustration i know what it's like but um my church has a lot of older members yep. uh who may not know how to even create content or be able to gather their thoughts to create that's no disrespect to older people what of i'm saying not. is a lot of times they'll give you the idea and then you have to take it and run with it well, yeah, um, so what's helped that, me oh sorry about that go ahead finish no you go ahead come back well like um like i i I do graphic arts, you know, I, I can make things. They know I can make things. I just right. want what you're saying. Give me give, give me a Word document of what you want. I can put in a moving yeah. background, blinking background, flowers, whatever you want. That's what I want. I don't want to get right. that. <laughs> right. Right. Like, you know, so mm -hmm. What, what um, uh, brother said, what Mr. Sarant said, is like, you know, give me, I guess, a better thought process and avenue to approach it, which is good because like, I could tell like the Sabbath school department, oh, what do you want to tell people to encourage them and get something from them? And then I have ideas now, so at least I won't be beating my head against the wall, I guess. So and, I'm, and, I'm, one of, and one other thing to encourage you, mm -hmm. right? I have right. found that when I've taken what people have given me mm -hmm. and other departments see it, they get motivated right. and they say, Oh, I saw what you did for sister. So-and-so can you do it for me? And I go, Oh, you want me to do that? This is what I need from you. Right. And sometimes it takes them a couple of weeks, but they try to, they, you could see them working. And then finally I get something on WhatsApp that I can take and run with it. And then it multiplies. Once people see that this department is getting, you know, mentioned on Facebook or their, 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 their flyers up during um, the announcements, they lean in now and they want to be a part of that. So that might help you as well. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say the same. Like if you, if you think about, an individual department, mm -hmm. all, I would assume all of them have the same needs. Sabbath school, the Sabbath school department almost always needs more people to get to Sabbath school or more people to have consistent study of the Sabbath school lesson. Then that, that should help you to create a series of content that can address that need. And once the ministry start to see how you're helping them with their ministries, I think they'll be more open and more receptive to coming to you proactively. Thank you. So, of course. So, so my hand is up. Sorry. Um, no, go ahead. Just to add, 
um, one of the good things about COVID, it kind of break down the barriers. So it's not like this church and that church. And so when we wanted posters to be our flyers to be created, we went to another church and find someone who could do it for us. And so you might have to outsource behind the walls and go to the virtual walls, uh, the, the walls of the social media, the Zoom, and, and make that connection. That's what we had to do. I completely agree with you. I think we have, let's see. Uh, what microphone am I using? That's a good question. I am using, I can tell you right now. Give me one second. I'm using an Elgato Wave 3. I hope that answers your question. What I can do when we get back to the general session is I'll uh, add all of the resources into the chat. So you'll see a, a list of, of items for, for you. I believe so. I'm using someone else's setup. Any other questions on social? What what churches are you guys from? And what are, you, what are your churches doing on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok? Specifically interested in what your churches are doing on TikTok, but Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. How are your churches using Instagram and Twitter, Facebook? You know, you really gave me a lot of insight because I'll be honest with you. I, I've been very top heavy um, with using Facebook. We have a Facebook page. We have a YouTube page. We do not have an Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, but that's something that we can certainly look into. I think with Facebook, creating a schedule, I think was a great idea mm -hmm. because I tend to just put everything on Friday night and Sabbath morning. Fair. <laughs> um, Fair and I, I, I inundate, right, our Facebook platform with information. But, you know, when you say create a schedule, then that'll drive engagement throughout the week. Um, so I think that's a, just a really great idea. So I, I appreciate and there's, that. There's more opportunities for people to see your content. So it was right. mentioned in the general set, the first general session, all of the social net, the major social networks are, their content are governed by an algorithm that deprioritizes your content, your business page or like a professional page and prioritizes people to people pages, right? So you're fighting against a system on a platform that doesn't want people to see your content. And so you need to bring relevancy to your content and for your audience in order for them to see that. And relevancy is a soft skill. What does that even mean? It doesn't mean anything, but you want more of your audience to see your content. So you, it's not a, it's, it's a matter of uh, messing with the frequency, but testing out the different times of day that you're posting content. The more content that you're posting, the more opportunity there is for your members to engage with it. And that is throughout the week, not necessarily, you know, posting 16 times a day. Thank you. Of course. Um, can I just share something on the sharing of content? Um, for, my, for my business, I use, a, 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 there are two software that we could use, Planable. Mm -hmm. And also we will, I use Agora Pulse. These are where, what I do typically do is just put all the content that I want to post across all of the platforms that I want to market on, schedule it out. And that's it. So I take at least maybe 30 minutes each month and plan out the entire month. And I have all my content that's going to be posted each day and so forth. So those are resources that we could also tap into. But I know in the general session, they mentioned some less expensive ones. So we could also go back to that. And Facebook, uh, if you create, when you're creating your church's page, obviously it should be a business page. We could talk more in depth with that, but Facebook has a creative, creative manager and it will allow you to schedule content on Facebook and Instagram. Let me just add a suggestion as well. And I didn't hear it talked about, but I think it's important. There are a lot of resources that have nonprofit um, accounts. Canva, for example, if you have a valid 501c3, which we're all churches, we have access to that too. They will give you a pro account that you can have 10 users connected to, and it won't cost you anything. Google Workspace has a nonprofit side of it, where if you have your own domain, 
you can now have access to the entire entire Google Workplace suite. So you can have your church at your domain.com through the Google suite and it won't cost you anything. So don't be afraid to explore nonprofit sides of these accounts. You could save thousands of dollars realistically um, and have access to the full suite of uh, professional tools. Those are good resources. And keep in mind, there are a ton of YouTube channels, uh, Facebook pages for social media marketers in, within the church realm. And there's a ton of content out there about um, everything that you can imagine, what type of content to post, um, you know, leveraging uh, video content, how to create video content. It was talked about earlier, you know, if you look at your analytics and the bulk of your audience is over the age of 45, but you know that you have a vibrant young youth community, then maybe it is about creating content that appeals directly to young people, featuring young people, which means that you, your communication team may need to grow because you will need a videographer, you'll need some editors, you'll need some people to think through what it is that these young people are going to be saying and doing, but it's all about taking something really, really simple and, and changing your perspective on it. Are there any other questions that you guys may have? No, we have like 15 minutes left. So from a generational standpoint, right? I'm, I'm from the school of Facebook. Uh, Instagram came out a little bit later. So I know a lot of younger people are on Instagram and so on and so forth. Um, you were talking about multiple platforms. Would you assign age groups to those? And you might've said this already, but would you assign age groups to those platforms? I find that my older members um, love WhatsApp <laughs> um, all the time. Um, so you have to you know, share on there as well. But you know, in terms of just, just the generational needs of the people at the church, would you say, okay, you, you want to catch your, your 35 to, to 50 you know, group, you're going to go to Facebook. If you want to catch your older group, you're going to make sure you post things. And you didn't mean, I'm not sure if you mentioned WhatsApp. Forgive me if you said that. No, um, I didn't mention WhatsApp. It's, but I, I find that my older members, they, they live on that, you know? Yeah. So, you know, any thoughts just generationally, right? Being able to hit all age groups. Cause I find that to be, um, I find that to be challenging. No, I think, I think that's a, a really smart idea. Um, ensuring that each of your social platforms are targeted to a very specific audience is the, it's, it's very, it's a very smart thing to do. Um, even especially if you're going to create content across all of these different social platforms, it makes a lot of sense for you to assign like Facebook, you know, that there's a specific audience there. WhatsApp, as much as I'm sure all of us hate it, there's a specific audience there. And then Instagram and Twitter and TikTok and et cetera, et cetera. They're all going to have very different audiences. Even though you're going to, you can feature the same content, you may want to tailor that content for the specific platform. So, you know, on WhatsApp, you may not want to use more than 200 characters because it's going to come out in a message. You want to make sure that it's short and concise. You know, the same it will be true for Instagram. You want to make sure that you include a hashtag. Facebook may not need that. You know, Facebook, you might want to go a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. That's generally how I would approach it if I was working with a brand. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask... Cause I really like the, um, like the social media calendar that you posted about like having specific things for, I think the one that you posted was primarily Instagram. Yes. Um, can I get your opinion on, or maybe not just an opinion, but like an idea or a strategy on applying that to other types of media? because uh, like the other social platforms, because currently as my church stands, what I've been doing, which I also realize isn't, isn't exactly helpful because they're two different um, types of platforms, is that whatever I get, I just post it in the business suite that allows you to post in both Facebook and Instagram at the same time. Yep. And I just shoot it out, but I realized that like I would do multiples, like let's say of the same post, because I know that 
maybe not so much in Instagram, but on Facebook as a avid user that there are people and groups and ministries, whoever, who are posting every day and it'll never come across a person's page right. because for whatever reason, the algorithm just doesn't pull it up. Mm-hmm. However, if you look like they've been posting every day and you'll maybe see their post once out of an entire week of using it. Whereas Instagram is a little different. It's like truly a lot more like timeline sensitive, like depending on when you post it is when you see it. It's not entirely like, oh yeah, the algorithm is pulling one out because it's not as popular for you. So I wanted to ask because the calendar looks like a really good idea for Instagram. Um, What point would you have for like Facebook? I would do the same. I would, um, you can use any of like, when I when I first started into social, I would literally print a physical calendar and then write in some of the content pillars. Like uh, on Mondays, we want to do Monday motivation. We want to do it on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, we're going to use the same graphic, but different copy or like the, the words are going to be different. Um, we And then distribute it throughout the month the same way. Even if you tweak the timing that the content goes live, I think you can still use the, the calendar format um, and drop in your content pillars. And then it's easy. It's an easier way for you to write content and an easier way for you to get content out. And then once the month is over, you can review. If you saw that Monday motivational content didn't really perform really well on uh, Facebook as it did on Instagram, maybe you can deprioritize that on Facebook. So you know that the next month that comes up, we're going to do something a slightly different. Um, the same for Pinterest. You know, believe it or not, Pinterest leads more people back to your website than any other social network. And so if that is an important metric for you or for your organization, then totally have a, a Pinterest page. Uh, and the sky is really the limit on the type of Pinterest boards, which is how Pinterest operates, the type of Pinterest boards that you can create. Uh, as an Inventus person, I can think of like five different ones. You would want to do one that features like the uniformed ministries and where they can get um, some of the uniform pieces and what the actual like Pathfinder Adventurer Master Guide uniform should be. You could do one for like the choir members. If there's a choir uniform or robe that they should be purchasing, where they can find that. You could do a, a recipe page for vegans, for vegetarians, for meat eaters the things that are clean and unclean, there's like the the sky is truly the limit on how you can leverage social as a part of your ministry. Um, But in terms of creating your content calendar, I would definitely drop it in for each platform. I know that the ones that I showed, they're very, they look really, really pretty, but they're not as, they're not formatted for, you know, us to be used. It it was more for like a, and I, I can go back to that, yeah. It, it's more for um, it's more as a, a visual aid, but when you're building your content calendar, I think that it's vitally important for you to just to to note which content pillar you're gonna be posting on which date and on what platform, and and you can create a content calendar for both Facebook, Instagram, and what are the social whatever social networks that you have. Okay, thank you so much. Of course. Some questions. All right. Someone said the key thing with posting online is the best times you're posting. It, it impacts your reach and inter- interactions. Keep changing the times and see. Yeah, I think that's a that's a really really good point, and it's something that changes constantly. But there are a lot of resources available that will indicate, you know, what what are the best times to post your content. Whether it's six a.m. because they might show it to people who are checking their their social networks in the morning, or six p.m. I think it's really really important for you to vary your publishing times, and you can schedule content throughout the day. Um. But make sure that you're varying these posting times so you can see with your audience what, what's the best time to post. Uh, someone asked, what camera? I'm using a Canon 
EOS M50, I believe. Content pillar. All right, a content pillar is any piece of content that you're going to be posting on your social network. A content pillar can can be anything from, um, if you remember a long time ago, Monday motivation or like testimony Tuesday. All of those things are just pieces of content that you're going to deliver to your audience. And it allows you to find the relevant sources of content around it. So if you're going to do uh, like a two, like Tuesday testimonies, you, that's a content pillar. And you know that you can find four people in your church who are going to have a, a, a really, really interesting testimony. And you can create content around those things and post them every Tuesday. If you guys don't follow these this, this page, um, check out Humans of New York. It's an excellent uh, social net, social page. It's on Instagram as well as Facebook and I think on Twitter. Um, they do like really, really interesting human interest stories, which essentially are testimonies. Cool. So I think we're going to head back into the general session in a few moments. If you guys have any questions, feel free to write them in or send, shoot them over to communications at northeastern.org. Thanks everyone, thanks for joining me.